I've written a fast Fourier transform algorithm using Excel VBA. Now I've used Excel uh, version that's 2010. So some of the stuff here might be different slightly uh, if you've got a different version of Excel. But if you open up the file, you should get this here. Now down the first column here are the samples in time. So this is our F of N. Now I've just put in the values that we did for the sine function. So these are the values that we've seen in just the, the previous video when we worked through the full example. Now x of k is where the answer is going to lie. So when we do the FFT algorithm, the answers for that will arrive here. Okay, so this will be our function of frequency. I've then split that into the real and imaginary parts. I've also got a column here where we'll actually perform the built-in Excel FFT and we'll make a comparison between our algorithm results and the actual Excel function. So this, this column here should match up with this column here. Now, before we do anything, if you want to look at the code, then you need to have the developer section set up. So you need to have this little tab here. So in order to get that tab in 2010, you can press file and options customize ribbon and you'll see there's a little option there to tick for developer so if you tick that option it'll give you access to the code now another thing to note here is if we're actually going to run the excel function then you're going to have to have this data analysis here so the data analysis has got the Fourier analysis and that Fourier analysis option there is actually the FFT so in order to get that, you're going to have to get into File, Options, Add-ins, and you're going to have to click in the bottom here where it says Excel Add-ins. So you see it's got the option there for the Analysis Tool Pack. I know I've put in the Analysis Tool Pack VBA, so I've clicked on both of those. So if you press OK on that, it will give you op the access to the inbuilt Excel FFT. So let's go ahead now and we'll actually work through the example here. So if it's all set up properly, you should be able to click on this button. So this is the FFT button. So when I click on this, it'll give us our value. So let's just do that now. So that's it, worked it out. Now this is good because this is what we expected to see. The real part is all zero and the imaginary part has got a value of minus 4i here and it's got a 4i here. So that's exactly as we've seen whenever we worked it out using the first principles. And these are the actual original values here. And you can see that this term here is e to the minus 14. So that's tiny. So it is in effect zero. So that's why I've shifted them from this column into the real and imaginary. So I just put them into uh, uh, two decimal places. So what we want to do is compare this here with the actual Excel function. So to get the Excel function, you just click on the data. If you're in the data tab, you should have access to that data analysis and you've got the option for Fourier analysis. So if I press OK on that, then it'll give you the option to choose the input range. So this is our input range here. So and it gives you an option for the output range as well. So that's where you're going to put the answer. So we're going to put the answer in this column here. And then if you press OK on that, it'll give you the actual answer. So I'll shift this out a bit. And you can see here that we've got a value of zero here and we've got our minus four. We've got a value of zero here. Now this is actually to the, this one here is actually zero as well because it's, uh, it's 0 0.00003 okay so it's actually a, 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 a tiny number so I just uh, made that as equal to zero but that's exactly the same as we've got here if you check this out 0 0.0003 okay and this is zero and that's the same as well this is a tiny number and this here is the tiny number as well so it's actually zero and we've got the 4i at the end so it all matches up the Excel function gives us the same values as our FFT 
algorithm. So that's good that it does that and it all looks fine. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll have a look at the actual algorithm. Now in order to get in to have a look at the algorithm, you can get into developer and you can just press in type uh, press the button view code. And that's going to give you access to the code here. Now what I'll do is I'll make the code a bit bigger and then we'll go in and we'll have a look at it and we'll talk through all of the code. So if you manage to open up the code it should look like this. Now the best way to work through the code is if you were to click anywhere on the screen and then you can press the function key F8 so F8 should step through the code. So you press F8 and you'll see it starts at this line here. So first thing it does, it calls a function FFT. So it just jumps to the function FFT. Now set up the variables here in these two lines, but we'll talk about those later. It then goes to the first line of code we're going to execute, which is the clears the contents of some of the columns in the worksheet. So the worksheet, there's only one there that we're using. It's called FFT, and it just clears these columns B and D. So you can actually have a wee look at those as well, if you just come in here. So it's going to be columns B and D, so it starts off at uh, row 2 there, and just deletes out any information there that may have been there from a previous uh, FFT. So this line here, it counts the contents in the column A, and it returns the value into a variable called count. So in this instance here, it's going to count 12 entries. And you can see the 12 entries in this example here. So we've got the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, the 12 entries here. So it counts to 12 and all the zeros there for the rest of them are just missed out. Now we're only interested in uh, actually 11 of those because the first row is just our heading row so we we say that n is equal to the count minus one so that will go from the value of 12 to a value of 11. Now the value for n is the samples in the time domain so the number of samples in the time domain has to be a power of uh, 2. So for example, we need to, to be either uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 25, 6, so on and so forth. So we're going to have to find the closest value of 2 for the number of samples that we have. So in this instance here, we've got 11 samples. So the closest value there is going to be the, the value of uh, 2 to the 3. So 2 to 3 would be 8, so it would mean that we wouldn't be interested in the 9, 10, 11, so we would just delete those off. So we were only going to be taking, in this instance, a, a count of 8 samples. So we do that in this line here, so it's going to test to see whether uh, the value 2 to the x is less than or equal to the value of n, and also it's going to do the test to see if x plus 1 is greater than n. So whenever these two conditions are met, then we know that we've got the closest um, power. So the best thing to do is just work your way through it if you're not sure. So you just go through each of them in turn. So x is going to be 0, and then x is going to be 1, and x is going to be 2, and then when we get x is equal to a value of 3, so that's x3 there, so it's going to be 2 to 3, which is 8, so 8 is equal to that value of, uh, is less than, sorry, equal to the value of n and also x plus 1 is greater than uh, the value of n which is 11 so it's going to be 3 plus 1 is 4 so it's 2 to the 4 is 16 so it means that these two conditions are met whenever these two conditions are met we can come out the loop and we've got the x value which is 3 so we've got the closest power there so it's going to be 2 to the power of 3. So now we can replace this value n with the value uh, 2 to the 3. So now the n is equal to 2 to the power of 3, which is a value of 8. So now this next, next two lines here goes ahead and it deletes off the extra values here. So you can actually see the deletion here if you come in here. 
and you can see both of them are running at the same time. So whenever I, I click on the, these these here, it'll delete off the extra values here we don't want. So that's 10 rows, 10, 11 and 12. And you see them, that's them disappeared. So now we're left with only the eight values that we're interested in. And these are our eight samples in the time domain. The next two lines set up our twiddle factors here. So we've got TF1 and TF2. Now we use these worksheet functions. So it's worksheet function dot, and this is the exponential, but it's a complex exponential. So that's basically uh, e to the power of i something. Now the something is this complex function here. So the complex function here has got real part is zero and the imaginary part is minus two and again it's another function which is pi so it's minus two pi upon the value of n so basically this line here just says e to the minus two pi upon n and the next twiddle factor here is the value e to the minus two pi upon n upon two so now we're going to work through the main body of the code, starting really from here, from this x equals 1 to d. Now the d value here is going to be the exponent, which is a value of 3. So again, we can get our exponent here uh, from taking the log. So what do you have to raise the power? What do you raise, have to raise 2 by in order to get um, 8? And the answer to that is the value of 3. So this is just a log function. So we're working from x equals the value of 1 to 3. Now we're defining here the functions f of e, so that's the even part of our samples in the time domain, and f not f o, which is the odd part of our samples in the time domain, and we've got our function x of k, which is the output in the frequency domain, and we've got these other two functions here which we'll talk through as we're going to use them. And we have to redimension these as well because the length of the function can change. So if we were come down to the next line here, so what we want to be able to do is split the function into the even and odd components. So we do that with these couple of lines here. So we've got an even function here and the, uh, the value of the index is going to be i. And this line here is going to give you the even parts of this the values and this line here is going to give you the odd part. So all you need to do is just work through these little three lines here and you'll see that the values here are going to give you the even and odd parts. So we work through here and you can actually see here if you click on at the side here you'll see each of them getting dropped into the function in order. So that's a value of 1 there and the value 0.707 and a value of 0 there and a value of minus 0 0.707 so you'll be able to see by working through this for next loop the values of the eight samples get split into two four bit samples so now we start building up the algorithm here we have pe of n so that's the even part and PO of M, that's the odd part. So it's going to be the product of two complex numbers. So the complex numbers are going to be the FE of M. So that's the even part of our sample. So we split our sample into an even and an odd. So this is the, the four um, even parts. And we're going to have multiply that with the twiddle factor. So the twiddle factor we had defined uh, previously was E to the minus I 2 pi upon 2n and we're going to raise that to the power of k times m and we do the same thing for the odd component as well so you just press that and you'll work through so the best thing to do is to actually take a note of the values and you'll be able to see how are the values working through for each of these and work through and work through that first section here we're going to be able to work out the value of our x of k. So this is for main part of our algorithm here. 
So this line here is going to give us the first part of our algorithm. So we're going to have a worksheet function and we're going to be adding up two imaginary numbers. So it's going to be a complex number. So it's going to be the sum here of this number here and what's left over at this section. So this number here is simply going to be the value of our PE, which is we got from above. So that's really based just the, the even part of our, our, our function uh, of frequency. And the, I'm going to add on to it the second part. Now the second part of the function is going to be the odd part, which is going to be multiplied together with a twiddle factor. So the second part here is going to be the product of two uh, complex numbers. Okay, so the first part of the first one is going to be the value PO, which we get from above here, and also it's going to be uh, multiplied by the twiddle factor as well, which we get at this section here. Now, the next line down is going to be the second part of the algorithm, which gives us the second half of our FFT. So this is really at the x to k plus n upon 2. And it's going to be, again, the in this case here, it's going to be a, a subtraction because it's actually going to be the value x even part of k minus the twiddle factor times the odd part of k. So that's you get this from uh, this line here, okay? So if you just work through each of the values in turn, now what I suggest you do, if you're unsure about how it's actually working through this, what you could do is you could take the the example that we worked through by hand of the sine function. You can write out every single value of that, the sine function worked out for a DFT, and then you can see those values running down through this algorithm as you work through for every single value. And then at the end, what it's going to do is going to uh, print out the actual values for the FFT here. And I've also added in the extra line here in order to split it into the real part and the line down here to split it into the imaginary part. So that goes up through again for the next value of k. And walks on and so on and so forth. And it goes through that set an algorithm for um, three times. So we does it now for uh, x is equal to the value of 2, and then it does it for x is equal to the value of 3. Now, as you work through, you'll be able to see uh, each of the values being uh, put on to the actual um, uh, uh, spreadsheet here. So you can work through, and you can see each individual value getting put on to the spreadsheet. Let's see if we can see any appearing here. Okay. Now there you go, you can see the values getting put on at each instance. There you go. So it's good to work through them individually and just get all the values and just be sure that you understand how the algorithm runs through it. So thank you for listening to this video. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.